What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. In today's video, wait, what is my freaking line? <laughs> What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. My name is Tony Brienne, and in today's video, we'll be discussing the misogyny of the early 2000s. Oh, let me specify the intense misogyny of the early 2000s. Now, before we get into today's topic, I want to speak about another very important matter that is going on right now. There is an active genocide going on where we're seeing 40% of an entire population of people being killed. This is something that I was not going to speak on at first because I thought I did not have the platform or enough people watching me to speak on something as important as this is. However, I was proven very wrong. No matter how big your platform is, we all need to speak against something that is not right. Just because this isn't in your household, just because it's not in your community, it's not in your town, your city, your state, this country does not mean we should not speak up when there is injustice happening. I will be listing lots of resources down below if you guys would like to donate to the cause or if you guys would like to sign any petitions and some other creators that I see on the platform that are speaking heavily and have more knowledge on the matter than I do. I pray for everybody in Gaza and I just feel as if it's important for all of us to speak our truth. And it would be disingenuous for me as an influencer to post a video and talk about a topic and promote a company without me speaking about this. So it's never too late. If you have a voice, please use it. So I definitely will be praying for those involved and anyone that has lost lives in either side. Yeah, it's a scary time happening right now and I can't believe in 2023, this is something that we have to speak against or speak on in general. So please be sure to check out those resources that I will be linking down below. And yeah, let's get straight into today's video. Taking you in this moment. Today's quote of the day is, regardless of what is thrown at me, I am still a good person. Today's verse of the day is Romans chapter 10, verse 10, and it reads, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Here's a word from today's sponsor. Calera is probably one of my most favorite athleisure brands out there right now. Their fitness outfits literally support and flatters the natural body figures because we all know today women are constantly pressured to look a certain way but with Holera you will want to embrace your body because all of their designs support and flatters the natural body figure. But the coolest thing about these leggings that I have from Holera is the fact that they're waterproof. I just was drinking my water and I spilled. Watch this real quick, watch. So if I spill, you guys have to see how this absorbs. Look at how it's like falling off. You can't tell me that's not the coolest thing ever. Oh my gosh, like my pants don't even feel drenched at all. Like that is amazing. I, I literally love how these shape my body one, but then the fact that if I spill, I don't have to worry about being drenched is amazing top tier top tier i love 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 these leggings like if you're anything like me you're probably somebody that's into comfort but also looking cute and Hilera does both of these perfectly their stretchy soft and slimming materials are meant for everybody with sizes extra small to 3xl that's something almost unheard of especially today when it comes to clothing brands i love a brand that's inclusive and wants every woman to feel beautiful and look beautiful now y'all know black friday is coming up one of my favorite times of year, but a lot of these companies are not Black Fridaying like they used to. Hilera is having a pre-Black Friday sale up to 70% off on their website, but along with that up to 70% off, if you use my code TONY20, you'll receive 20% off your entire purchase. With Hilera, you'll feel comfortable being you and looking like you without the need to alter your body. More details on Hilera will be linked in the description box down below, and thank you so much Hilera for sponsoring this segment of today's video. I primarily want to speak about the misogyny in the early 2000s because I feel like it is slowly coming back today. Now, obviously today, women are a lot more free to speak their mind, share their truth, be unapologetically themselves. But even with that, it still comes with a lot of scrutiny. And when I was just looking at clips primarily with Britney Spears, who we are going to speak on today, I am utterly disgusted with how the media would throw women under the bus and 
make it seem as if women were crazy if they spoke their truth or were anything but God-given women. I've also gone down a rabbit hole of the it girls of the early 2000s when socialites and heiress of families were brought up into fame. Obviously today, people that get famous, it's a little bit different. We have influencers now, but before it was if you were like literally born into rich, there was always a fascination about you and that made you famous. And a lot of these women were scrutinized beyond belief, though they were going through a lot more darker issues behind the scenes that no one cared to talk about. You guys will be appalled by the things that we're going to talk about in today's video. So y'all grab your tea, get your popcorn, and let's get into today's video. The sexist culture of the media in the early 2000s was heavily prevalent in television, radio, and the tabloids. These sources would frequently objectify and crucify the up-and-coming women of the early 2000s. And as I stated, this is still something that happens today, but there is a very big difference than what we see now and what we saw then. For one, women were rarely featured in television ads, magazine covers, and heck, even TV shows. But if they were, they were significantly objectified. You would see them wearing skimpy clothing, lingerie, bikinis, in certain scenes that it obviously was not necessary for them to be wearing such little clothing. But unfortunately, due to this, there began a raunchy, more risque type of culture that we can look back on today as the early 2000s aesthetic. That's where we have the Paris Hiltons, the Lindsay Lohans, the Kim Kardashians, sex tapes, scandal. That was the early 2000s because the only way for women to get attention was if they did all of that. But it's funny because that's the only way that women would get attention. But then whenever they would get attention from these sources, the radios, televisions, and tabloids, they would be spoken about so poorly that it was almost hard to look at. That's just one level. So with women having to wear lesser clothing and reveal themselves a bit more, we all know that came with the body shaming era. If a woman went up one size, she was heavily scrutinized. She was called fat. She was called worthless. She was called any name in the book, but the name that God has given us. And we have to realize you guys, the girls were wearing such little clothing because that's what was popular. So you can literally see every roll or crevice if you gained just a few pounds and the media would call you out like clockwork. Along with this, these up and rising young women's personal lives were put on full display as well. And especially when it came to their sex lives. If they did something with a man, they would get called out for it, whereas the man will get praised for it or it would never be mentioned, period. Now that's something that still happens today, but we saw it a lot. And you guys will be hearing a few examples of this when I go into the people that I'm going to speak on. Celebrities like Paris Hilton, Christina Aguilera, Lindsay Lohan, Nicole Richie were subject to this high high level of scrutiny. In today's video, we're going to highlight three women that were heavily affected by the intense misogyny of the early 2000s. And the first woman we're going to begin with is none other than Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Ann Hudgens was born December 14th, 1988 in Salinas, California to her parents, Gina and Gregory Hudgens. After making her feature film debut in the movie 13 back in 2003, Vanessa quickly rose to fame when she was portraying Gabriela Montez in the hit trilogy, High School Musical 1, 2, and 3. This brought her significant mainstream success and fame. The success of the first movie and her character led her to also get into music and she went on to release two studio albums. During the height of Vanessa's significant success, something very unfortunate happened that almost tainted her entire career. In 2007, while Vanessa was going on to film High School Musical 3, Vanessa found herself in the center of a scandal that was kind of a her will. Hollywood seems to love a good scandal. Uh, we're always hearing about the big name bad girls. Now scandalous pictures of Vanessa Hudgens, the star of that kids movie High School Musical, which was overwhelmingly popular in the Disney Channel, just came out about two weeks ago. We're told that will probably mean millions for her career. Nude photos of her were stolen from her phone and leaked to the media. The National Enquirer caught wind of this first, but this is the craziest part. The physical photos were shown on gossip websites, one of them being Perez Hilton's website. Why I find this to be absolutely disgusting is that I understand a little bit of gossip. I understand you wanting to drop news of the latest scandal, but when you're putting someone's personal photos on the internet for everybody to see, you are an incredible 
incredibly crude and cruel person. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know if you guys remember, or maybe this was just people in my area. There used to be exposed pages where people would send photos to a page, normally like an Instagram or Facebook account, and then they would post the photos on the page. I was like 12 or 13 and I was shocked the amount of girls that did send photos because I was too scared to show any of my body parts because I was not very proud of them just yet. <laughs> but I was disgusted by the amount of young boys that felt comfortable enough to show those photos of those girls. And not only that, the person that would run those pages would promote it before posting the photos and they were almost proud that they were doing something like this. Me personally, I would see the photos on those pages and I wouldn't even screenshot them because if that were me, would I want someone that already invaded my privacy and put something online that I sent to them privately? Why would I want some stranger or somebody else that I may know to get those pictures as well and have them kept on their phone? That's not okay. But honestly, this was a very popular thing back in the day. People loved exposing women for some odd reason. And then they would call these women out of their names and never put the accountability on the person that leaked those photos. So similar to the Instagram accounts that I'm speaking on, just as the people in the comments were just disgusting and just vile and mean, same were the tabloids for these women that were at a way larger scale than the little Instagram page from my little town. The tabloids were just cruel and there were so many sexist jokes made in remarks to Vanessa's photos and even to her face. People, men primarily, felt comfortable to call her out and to kind of throw it in her face that she got exposed. And let me just tell you, Vanessa was just 18 years old when these photos got leaked. Take a look at this clip. Your success is pretty cool, so I try to remember the things we talked about and I know you talked about hanky panky boy shorts and get in your car <laughs> and we made fun of your coworker, but you know what she's brought en enough on herself the girlfriend meant she needs to hire somebody to maintain the lawn at her house you know I mean and the world knows that now and and so I remember all of these things from our previous conversation go ahead and laugh because you, know you, no. you know you want to I'm uncomfortable <laughs> Can I just, can I just, can I, before I, before I do the uh, choice hotties, can I just say what everybody in this room is thinking but nobody has said? Where's Vanessa Hudgens? Girl, you got to keep your clothes on! <laughs> Phones are for phone calls, girl! Oh, that is just amazing. I thought that was amazing. Finally, someone is telling this girl what phones are for. You can literally see the discomfort on this young girl's face. Who in their right mind thought that was okay to make a joke, especially when this just happened? That's the early 2000s for you, y'all. And let me just state some of the things that people were saying towards Vanessa, and these were mothers. Mothers saying this about Vanessa. Y'all will be appalled. A Los Angeles mother of two said, in quote, she's damaged. She's got this teeny bop audience, young preteens and younger, who are admiring her and thinking she's this wonderful, pure, innocent person. 18 is awfully young for this kind of display, end quote. Her name is Renee. Renee, B-F-F-R. What does that spell? A B for real. <laughs> Labeling this young girl as damaged is crazy. Another Los Angeles mom said this, I am devastated because I have an eight-year-old for which I now have to have an explanation. She's always looked at this character as a very smart and proper young lady, end quote. So now apparently she's not a very smart and proper young lady because somebody stole photos of her that she took of herself in the privacy of her room? Once again, BFFR, this lady's name is Rosie. Rosie B. For real. Sorry, y'all. These comments are just pissing me off. Like the fact that people were out here saying things like this and proudly saying it and letting the interviewer get their first and last name says exactly what the early 2000s was like. The misogyny and pickneyism was just spewing out of these mothers' mouths. And now who knows who these children are today because these children are, one of them said I have an eight year old, so their kid's probably around my age. Hopefully they didn't take after their mothers. Now, Vanessa issued an apology and I'm almost certain she was forced to issue an apology because once again, she was one of the rising stars on Disney Channel, probably one of the most famous faces on Disney Channel at the time. So I can imagine Disney or her team told her to put out a statement and the statement said 
with this. I want to apologize to my fans whose support and trust means the world to me. I am embarrassed over the situation and regret having ever taken these photos. I am thankful for the support of my family and friends. Now, instead of Disney deciding to put a PSA to maybe not expose photos or not to steal personal photos from people, they decided to say this instead. Vanessa has apologized for what was obviously a lapse in judgment. We hope she learned her lesson. How disgusting is that statement? All the blame just went to Vanessa when Vanessa was never the one that put the photos online, her personal photos. She can do whatever she wants in the privacy of her home, especially given she was an 18 year old. She was technically considered an adult. She can do what she wants as an adult. And that does not mean it is okay for someone to invade her privacy. For them to say they hope she learned her lesson, what lesson was there to be learned? She took photos with her phone in her room and sent it to her person. There should be nothing for her to apologize about. The only person that should be apologizing is the disgusting person that decided to put those photos out online and the media outlets that decided to post them as well. Now, after both Disney and Vanessa apologized, Vanessa was seen outside of a church, almost as if it was a photo op to portray that she was going to church after making this egregious decision. And she learned her lesson from this and now she's going to be a good girl. The fact that Disney really piled on with like what Vanessa Hudgens had to do after her nudes leaked was ridiculous because she was legal like these images were not child pornography that were being spread around I mean obviously the hack is disgusting and these were images that she was trying to share with somebody that she loved i.e Zac Efron at the time and nobody else was supposed to see them but the fact that they made her seem like she was this evil horrible person and made her apologize and then Disney were like we're really disappointed. Like this should never have happened. And then she had to go to church as if to like repent from her sins is so unhinged and so wild and crazy. So obviously I had to get the photos. They're not as like crazy as you would think they were, but everybody knew what was going on. And if you like search the Just Jared article about it, it is really kind of funny. Now y'all know I'm a Christian. I do go to church, but to make someone go to church for a photo op or to make it seem as if they're a better person because they're in church, that is just disgusting. Like why are we using church as a charade to make it seem as if Vanessa has repented and she now has learned from her mistakes? Like, come on y'all. Like it was just a hot mess and Disney handled it so poorly along with the tabloids and honestly all the fans. The fans were making jokes about it, reposting it, talking about it. I remember this time. If y'all don't remember, I know I sure do. This was like a canon moment in everybody's lives. I remember we were all talking about it. My sister, my cousins, my friends from school. It was like this big scandal. But we made it this big scandal and people were making jokes about it primarily because Disney and the media did not talk about the severity of this issue in terms of exposing people for funsies. Now, thankfully, Vanessa did not lose her role in the hit series High School Musical, but I think if Disney could, they would have gotten rid of her. The only reason why I believe Disney did not get rid of her was because she was once again such a prominent person in Disney Channel at that time, and her leaving High School Musical most likely would have severely affected the numbers for High School Musical three, she was such a prominent character in the film that they would be silly to get rid of her. But like I said, if they wanted to, they probably would have to maintain their squeaky clean image, though a whole bunch of Disney stars have gone through hell and back while they were working for Disney. But nobody wants to talk about that. Now, fast forward two years after this happened to Gabriella. Oh God, not Gabriella. <laughs> Sorry, Vanessa. <laughs> Two years after this happened to Vanessa Hudgens, she had more photos get leaked. In August 2009, topless photos of Vanessa were released online. So Vanessa later commented on the impact that these photos did on her career and how it made her feel. In an October issue of Allure, she said this in quote, whenever anybody asks me what I do nudity in a film, if I say that it's something I'm not comfortable with, they're like bullshit you already done it. If anything, it makes it more embarrassing because that was a private thing. It screwed up that someone screwed me over like that. At least some people are learning from my mistake." End quote. And it's so sad to this day, she's labeling this as a mistake. Yes, I'm sure she learned a lesson like to be careful who you send photos to and how to prevent people from getting what you put out there. Maybe not taking any nudes would lessen the chance of this happening. But at the end of the day, this was an invasion of her privacy and she should not have been scrutinized and ridiculed to the 
amount that she was. 10 years after Vanessa's photos were leaked, she did an interview with Cosmopolitan UK and she said this in quote in terms of how the photos affected her career and how she felt during that time when they were leaked. It was a really traumatizing thing for me. It's really up that people feel like they are entitled enough to share something that personal with the world. As an actor, you completely lose all grip of your own privacy, and it's really sad. It feels like that shouldn't be the case, but unfortunately, if enough people are interested, they're going to do everything they can to get to know as much about you as they can, which is flattering, I guess, but then people take it too far and end up divulging things that should be personal." End quote. And I completely agree with Vanessa. People feel as if they're inclined to your information whenever you are a public figure. And I have always felt against that because whenever I see people creeping and trying to search for information, I'm like, what if this was you? What if you were in this person's shoes? I think if information is already out there, stories already out there, that's a different thing. But the fact that people are actively lurking and searching for things to cancel a person or to embarrass somebody or to make it seem as if they're not as good as you think they are, that is some hater-ish. And also it's very invasive. And just because this person is a celebrity or just because this person is a public figure does not give you the right to invade their privacy or have more knowledge about them. Now today, it's almost as if Vanessa Hudgens leaked photos never even happened because people don't care as much. I mean, people post their own nudes all the time online. <laughs> like, let's be furl. But once again, this shows how intense the misogyny and the image of trying to be the good, clean girl was out there in the early 2000s, though you weren't able to really make it unless you gave off more this sexy image and you allow the media to ridicule, scrutinize, and make you feel less than. Moving right along to none other than the queen, Janet Jackson. Miss Janet Jackson was born May 16th, 1966 in Gary, Indiana to a whole sleuth of siblings and her parents. Janet's parents were Katherine Jackson and Joe Jackson. And she is the youngest of siblings, Latoya Jackson, Jermaine Jackson, Randy Jackson, Tito Jackson, Brandon Jackson, Marlon Jackson, and most notorious, Michael Jackson. Janet has built a musical legacy that most artists can only dream of. She has five Grammys, a hundred million albums sold, 10 number one hits on the Billboard Hot 100s, and a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She is literally a global icon. And when y'all hear this story, it just proves exactly how misogynistic the early 2000s were. Y'all saw that sass I just gave? I didn't even mean to do that. That was just how I really felt whenever I hear this entire Janet Jackson charade, it pisses me clean off. So in 2004, when Janet Jackson was well into her career and very successful, alongside having a very successful brother, Michael Jackson, like the fact that she was able to even be at the level of fame that she was when she had Michael Jackson as her brother, says a lot about Janet's talent. So in 2004, Janet Jackson was set to perform the 2004 halftime Super Bowl show. And on the day that she performed, February 1st, 2004, over 150 million viewers were at home watching their screens, seeing this performance. So there was going to be a surprise during Janet's show and her team made sure to say this before it came out, I guess to bring some excitement to the halftime show, because as we all know, the halftime shows are sometimes one of the most important parts of the Super Bowl, especially if you're not into football like me. For me, it's the food and the halftime show that brings me to Super Bowl Sunday and to be excited for it. <laughs> but yeah, they were like, there's gonna be this big surprise and it's just gonna be amazing. And that big surprise was none other than Justin Timberlake. So Justin came alongside Janet during the halftime show to perform a duet with her. It was his song, Rock Your Body. And everybody was super excited because Justin Timberlake was super popular at this point in his career. As Justin got to the final line of his song, which was gonna have you naked by the end of this song, he pulled off a part of Janet's costume to reveal her breast, which was only covered by a nipple jewelry. It was like a sun-shaped nipple jewelry piece. So the performance ended abruptly. The cameras went to a different angle, not showing them up close. And we just kind of saw Janet looking very confused and like shocked right before this happened. So people knew 
hmm, I don't think this was a part of the show. Now the part that showed Janet's breast was literally less than a second, but what came with that basically halted the future of Janet's career. So MTV and Justin Timberlake both issued apologies the same night that this happened. Justin said in quote, hey man, we love giving you all something to talk about. I am sorry that anyone was offended by the wardrobe malfunction during the halftime performance. And MTV stated, the tearing of Janet Jackson's costume was unrehearsed, unplanned, completely unintentional, and inconsistent with assurances we had about the content of the performance. MTV regrets this incident occurred and we apologize to anyone who was offended by it. So Justin's apology was incredibly lax and that was something that kind of threw me off guard because I'm like, you just exposed this woman's breast and she was not aware of it. And we'll get into what Janet Jackson said in a second, but this just shows how men are never affected by anything. It feels like sometimes they don't get ridiculed because of how lackluster his apology was. Almost as if he didn't care. He was like, okay, this happened. What does this have to do with me? This is the money shot I got, who cares? Now I'm not saying that's what he was thinking, but that's what that comment or apology, should I say, came off as. So after this incident happened, a lot of fans were upset because y'all know it was the early 2000s and we saw the comments that Miss Renee and Rosie said about Vanessa Hudgens. So you know they were appalled by this. A lot of people believe that it was set up between either Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake or just Janet Jackson, because you know, women always have to take the blame. This incident also made Janet Jackson the most searched person in 2004 and 2005. It broke the record for most search event over one day. It became the most watched, recorded, and replayed television moment in TiVo history. And the term wardrobe malfunction was coined as a result of this incident and eventually added to the Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. Oh, and let me also add, this allegedly is the reason and the cause to why I'm able to do what I'm doing today. This wardrobe malfunction was what caused him to come up with the idea of YouTube so people could rewatch the event because people at that time didn't have any way to rewatch these things, which is so crazy because if we see any event, we're able to see it a million and kajillion times on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you name it, you can see it. I didn't even think that people couldn't rewatch it again, but it's crazy that they found a way and that's why it was the most searched event for over a year. So soon after MTV and Justin Timberlake issued an apology, Janet Jackson did as well. So apparently Janet didn't want to say anything at first, but per the request of CBS, she said this in quote. My decision to uh, change the Super Bowl performance was actually made after the final rehearsal. MTV, CBS, the NFL had no knowledge of this whatsoever. And unfortunately, the whole thing went wrong in the end. I am really sorry if I offended anyone, that was truly not my intention. So MTV and CBS were fined for this incident happening. I think it was like an indecent exposure fine that they received from this. So I'm sure that's why Janet and also Justin had to say something. CBS was fined $550,000. And then the NFL was asked to refund the $10 million that they had been given to the halftime show sponsor. But just two days after this incident happened, on February 3rd, the FCC launched an investigation into the incident after receiving more than 500,000 complaints about the broadcast. Isn't that insane? Like something that happened for less than a second, over 500,000 people decided to take time out of their day to go and complain about this incident happening. Y'all, the early 2000s was a wild, wild time. So the same day that they launched this investigation, an MTV executive claimed that it was Janet Jackson's team that was responsible for all of this havoc. And that's what made Janet's team say that Justin's only responsibility was to pull away the top layer of the costume, which was meant to reveal a bustier underneath, but Justin overdid it. What people don't understand is he was to take and rip the piece off that he did. The but, leather piece. Right, but more came off than what was supposed yeah. to. So he was supposed to pull that off and we just see the red yes. there. And he ripped the whole thing. Yes. So he, knew, he had you practiced or whatever before? Yes, we did. Uh -huh. And so the moment that happened, you immediately covered your breast mm -hmm. because you didn't want to be exposed. Mm -hmm. If you'd wanted to be exposed, you wouldn't have covered it. Exactly. 
Okay. Very embarrassing moment. It was a very embarrassing moment. Yes. And what's crazy, years later, in April of 2021, celebrity stylist by the name of Wayne Scott Lucas, he claimed that this entire tearaway was actually Justin Timberlake's fault. And he had it planned all along in order to upstage his ex-girlfriend, Britney Spears, for when she did that stunt of her kissing Madonna and Christina Aguilera on stage. Which honestly, I wouldn't be surprised, especially given how lackluster Justin was after this incident happened. Exactly a week after the horrific Super Bowl incident happened, Janet Jackson was actually set to perform at the Grammys. So on February 8th, 2004, the 46th annual Grammy Awards took place and Janet Jackson was originally scheduled to appear during a Luther Vandross tribute, but she was removed from the lineup due to the aftermath of the Super Bowl. Meanwhile, Justin Timberlake was able to go and perform at the same exact Grammys. And not only was he able to perform, he took home two trophies at the Grammys while Janet had to sit on back and not be able to go because she was too much of an embarrassment to the Grammys. During his acceptance of one of his awards, Justin said this in his speech, I know it's been a rough week on everybody. What occurred was unintentional and completely regrettable. And I apologize if you guys are offended, end quote. And according to CBS, Justin was only able to perform at the Grammys because he issued an apology and Janet hadn't issued the apology yet. They claimed if Janet would have issued the apology, she would have been able to go ahead and perform at the Grammys, but she declined. I mean, I would decline too, especially if MTV blamed my team for ripping my shirt when I knew that was not the plan to begin with. And they immediately did it. There was no investigation. They said, same day, Janet did it. The black woman did it. Never America's golden boy. Well, 24 hours after that Super Bowl, Janet issued an apology. Uh, and I, I had read some in another magazine that you regret making that apology. Is that mm -hmm. true? Why? Uh, it was an accident. And management that I had at the time, they thought it was important that I did, mm -hmm. you know, with the project coming out. And, and I had said, actually, before I sat down to, to uh, record the apology, that I had said to them, What, what, what are you apologizing for? Yeah, why for? am I apologizing for an accident? Well, you did like, say in the apology, you apologize for anybody who might have been offended. By right. And, yeah. and they wanted me to say that. So, uh -huh. so I did. They thought it was best that I do. So I did. So when I say that Janet's future career was tainted, I believe it was tainted. And that doesn't take away from Janet's legacy, but it really altered her furthering her success. And to the point where people like me, though I know who Janet Jackson is, I honestly did not know the level of her success and fame until I saw her documentary of her explaining what happened and how it completely altered her career. So just a month and a half after the Super Bowl on March 30th, Janet went on to release her studio album. This was her eighth studio album called Demita Joe. While it was technically critically acclaimed, it was deemed as unsuccessful compared to her other albums. And that's because since 1984, every single one of Janet Jackson's albums hit number one when they were released. The week of the album's release, Janet Jackson went on the David Letterman show and he kept bringing up the incident and Janet had to tell him like, I don't want to talk about this. I don't feel good about it. Why do we keep talking about this? And I was just shocked that he kept bringing it up and that he thought it was okay to. And like I said, this just shows how misogynistic the early 2000s were and how they felt so inclined to celebrities business. All right, let, let's, uh, let's run through this now. Uh, tell us exactly uh, what happened from the time you got up on Super Bowl Sunday <laughs> to, to the time uh, the, the episode took place during the halftime. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to relive any of that. All right. I mean, you, you don't mind if I ask you some questions about it, though? <laughs> First of all, d uh, you, you knew it was going to happen, right? You did know it was going to happen. No, I didn't. You didn't know it was going to happen. No, I didn't. So it came as a complete surprise to you. <laughs> yes. Really? Yes, it was, so, it was so, completely so, an accident. It wasn't a stunt. Was not a stunt. No. It was not premeditated. No. It was nothing that you had rehearsed. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so how, how did it happen? What, what exactly transpired? Dave, Dave you're going to make me relive this. I, I, I want to put all that behind me. Well, not, well, not, well, not me. <laughs> sure, just indulge me here, and I'll make this as painless as possible. Okay? Uh, so, so it truly was a wardrobe malfunction? It was just a mistake? Is that what happened? It was, it was truly an accident. It wasn't supposed to happen. Wasn't supposed to, what was supposed to happen? Oh, God. 
Can we talk about something else, please? I've had a day of interviews, and I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing about it. I know I am. Let's ask me about something else. I'm not so sure they are sick of hearing about it. <laughs> um, here's the way I look at life. Sometimes things are good. Sometimes things are bad. And when things are bad, it's always important to have someone to blame. <laughs> so that's why I believe that it's this uh, Timberlake guy. I think it's his fault. Now, now, now he kind of uh, went Weasley on you and said, no, no, I had nothing to do with this. It was not, not my deal. I, had, uh, I didn't know what was going on. That's, that's what I heard. Now, did he know what was going on? No, it wasn't supposed to happen the way that it did, James. But, you know, it, it, it looked like it was supposed to happen that way. Oh, you're not going to let me... Something did. Something. Now, here, here it, when, when I watched the whole thing, as I was telling Paul, uh, you know, I got my face in a bowl of dip, and I, I just... And, and, and then when I saw what happened, I thought, oh, I didn't realize it was going to be that big a deal. Uh, and then it turned into a, a huge deal. But I, I'll, t I'll tell you what I think uh, was the problem with it, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, okay. is that I didn't like the way uh, th this guy, he goes up and, and does something. He grabs at a woman, you, and he, he pulls her uh, thing off. And I thought, well, that, that sends a very bad message to, to young boys in this country, that you go up to a woman, e even under the guise of a, a show business production, and pull her thing off. You, you're not supposed to behave that way. Pull, pull her thing off? Yeah. It, it, that's what happened. He pulled your thing off, didn't he? My thing off? <laughs> well, what did he pull off? Uh, a piece of clothing to me, right. my, my thing. Right. Well, see, that's what I meant. But, my thing. But, but see, that, 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 sends, that sends a he bad message. my thing. Yeah, that sends a, a bad message, don't you think? <laughs> Why are we talking about this right now, David? What would you like to talk about? <laughs> this, this is all I wanted to talk about for months. <laughs> What gets me with this whole Janet Jackson situation is the fact that a little bit of exposure kind of tainted the rest of her career. As I said, now I'm not going to take away from the legacy that she has built, but for sure, like I said, I think she would have had more longevity in her career had this event not taken place. Now, of course, there is an immense amount of issues in terms of women and how women are portrayed in media and how people speak about women, but we all see there's a very clear difference today versus what it was back in the day. And of course, this all kind of stems back to Justin Timberlake, because as y'all see, he didn't apologize to Janet Jackson. Jackson for revealing her breasts and he was very lax with the apology that he gave to his fans or should I say apology. Do you think in any way that uh, Justin Timberlake left you hanging out there? <laughs> I am speaking to Miss Jackson. <laughs> Do you? Well, uh, the, uh, all the emphasis was put on me, mm -hmm. not on Justin. And uh, <laughs> now, Janet Jackson is not the only celebrity whose career was tarnished due to something that Justin Timberlake interfered with. Now let's get into one of the most publicly ridiculed persons in media back in the early 2000s, Miss Britney Spears. Britney Spears was born December 2nd, 1981 in Macomb, Mississippi. Britney is often referred to as the princess of pop and for sure, her legacy says so. She is credited with influencing the revival of teen pop during the late 1990s and the early 2000s. She has sold over 150 million records worldwide, including over 70 million in the United States alone. And this makes her one of the highest selling female artists of all time. Now, I'm sure we've all seen Britney Spears life story and how it all has gone kind of downhill. And it's almost unfortunate to look at. But when you look back at Britney's history, you know a lot of what has stemmed with her mental health 
has to do with how the media bullied this young lady from the time she was just a young girl. In the beginning of the 2000s, Britney Spears was portrayed by media sources as a promiscuous woman, and they always said that she behaved as if she was older than she really was. As Britney got older, she did indeed shift her image, but that was mainly due to the fact that what was popular was being more risque, which I stated earlier. But you know with the media, they may want you to be more risque, but they're gonna judge you for doing so. Britney Spears! Britney Spears! Give it up one more time! Girl done went from the Mickey Mouse Club to the strip club! Go on with your bad self! Alright! Everyone now, they look back and they're like, what happened to your sweet image that you used to be? And I'm like, then when I came out, you thought I was too provocative. It's like you can never win. No matter what you do, at the end of the day, you can't please everybody. You know, I'm not here to please... Ugh. Have you ever gone further than you wish you had? Gone further? Yeah. Um, no. I don't think so. No? Okay. Now, those are a little much. Yeah, those are a little, um, much at the end of the shoot. And I was like, all right, let's go ahead and do it, and then let's jet. And I didn't have approval over the thing. So that's one picture, I must say, that I felt kind of weird about. Yeah. Wish you hadn't done it? A little bit, yeah, to be honest. But hey, it's done and I'll learn from it and I'll never be put in that position. The media closely examined and disapproved all of Britney's fashion choices, her relationship choices, the way she carried herself, and so much more. And the one standout of how Britney was treated in media definitely stems back to her relationship with Justin Timberlake. One of the most outrightly compelling relationships in Hollywood, especially in the early 2000s, was none other than Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. You had the princess of pop and you had this boy that just left the group in sync, which was a mega popular group in the early 2000s and the late 1990s. And now Justin was starting his solo career, so what better choice than for him to get with the pop princess? They literally were a PR team's dream relationship. Now, if you look at history, it definitely appeared that Justin looked at this as more of a business move, whereas Britney seemed to be really in love with him. And a lot of people saw this in interviews they would do in the past, and basically how Justin humiliated her throughout their relationship and allegedly led to her ultimately having a breakdown. And it led to more than two decades of tabloid drama, rumors, and accusations. A party. Yeah. <laughs> Music has not. Um, you know what? I think that acting is, you know, it's definitely a form of uh, expression, you know, creative expression, but. I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a step up and it's a step in the right direction. Thank you. And it's not overdone you know some some people when they try to make a change with their music they try to you know it's too drastic for, for people but it's just perfect but it's a trip to the altar that has britney's fans buzzing after her latest comments about marriage and in sync boyfriend justin timberlake i'm really really happy and hopefully he's really happy but that's something that we'll definitely do in the future not right now i got the idea for gone when um and obviously I wrote that back when me and Brittany were a couple and um, she went to the to the hair salon and said she was gonna be back in a couple hours got there decided to get a manicure pedicure and wasn't back for like five and that's what stemmed the idea for that song you know and it's kind of funny if you listen to the lyrics now you know maybe I was too blind to see that she needed a change Now for Justin, him being with Britney Spears really boosted up his celebrity. Like I said, Britney was the it girl of the time and Justin was just getting into separating himself from the mega superstar group he was already in. But especially following their split, it brought Justin to a whole nother level. And that was due to Justin using their relationship and breakup as a boost for his own personal career. Because this was a very popular relationship and breakup, Justin used this as promotion for his first solo album and probably 
one of the most famous things on that album was his song Cry Me a River, where he seemingly portrayed the fact that Britney Spears cheated on him. This kind of led everybody to victimize Justin Timberlake and to ridicule Britney Spears. One of the reasons Britney faced ridicule for years was due to Justin seemingly saying that she cheated on him and that is why they broke up. And like I said, at this time, Justin was America's golden boy. And Justin never came out saying Britney cheated on him, but him using his music video that was very obviously supposed to be Britney Spears, he knew what he was doing and he knew it was meant to work in his favor while leaving her in the dark. And as you know, the media was very misogynistic and sexist back in that day. So it led them to an array of reasons to hate Britney Spears. To give me another song about a horrible woman. The breakup with Britney has been devastating for Justin. You can bop me. I have to ask a couple of things about Justin. Okay, of course. He has gone on television and pretty much said, you broke his heart. You did something that caused him so much pain, so much suffering. What did you do? <clears throat> I was upset. I was upset for a while. We both... He's left the impression that, that you weren't faithful, that you betrayed the relationship. I think everyone has a side to their story. And... Um, to make them feel a certain way, to make them feel, you know, and I'm not technically saying he's wrong, but I'm not technically saying he's right either. And I saw that video. What video? The, um, mm, the video. Mm. Mm, I'm scared. Cry me a river. I just gotta know what your reaction was to that video, seeing it for the very first time. Do you remember that? I was a little puzzled. Like, I was kind of like, a little thrown off a little bit. But, you know, he, I don't judge anybody because that's what he had yeah. to do to go through what he had to do. I mean, I probably right. wouldn't have handled it that way. But, you know, guys, egos, da-da-da-da-da, you know, whatever. But There's a lot in that da-da-da-da-da, by the way. Yeah, exactly. But, um... Yeah, it was a little, it, it was kind of weird. Were you more puzzled or were you more like, I'm going to get on the phone and I'm going to tell someone off? Oh, um, I didn't do that. Yeah. I didn't, like, I was just kind of, just kind of in shock mode a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Timberlake has made a kind of sport out of public retaliation. On a popular morning drive radio show in New York promoting his album, he has a kind of gleeful confession about their very private life. Top 97. The Strong Buckwell Morning Show. Justin Timberlake is in the house. And I just want to ask you one question. Did you Britney Spears? <laughs> yes or no? Oh, man. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, I did it. No, yeah! It was a really weird time. There was, like, talk about our what we did together and like really sexually, sexually yeah. and stuff and I just felt very exploitive and very weird. I'd like to think that at first he'll date a popular female singer. <laughs> Publicly they'll claim to be virgins but privately he hid it. <laughs> The world has long been full of Madonna wannabes, and I might have even dated a couple. So is everybody speculating about what's going on? Is she having a nervous breakdown? Is she... I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Is that what they're speculating? Uh, yeah. Oh, people. okay. <laughs> uh-huh. But the craziest part, there was a way darker reality when it came to Britney and Justin's relationship. So while Justin was allowing the media to hound Britney and ridicule an already mentally fragile woman, he was actually the one that was cheating on her and he allegedly made her go on and get an abortion. In Britney's new memoir, The Woman in Me, Britney shared that during her relationship with Justin, she 
she fell pregnant and ended up getting an abortion because he wanted one. According to Brittany, Justin said that they were too young to have a child and that they probably shouldn't keep it. Brittany stated that they mutually agreed, but she later regretted and still to this day regrets the decision of terminating the pregnancy. She describes it as one of the most agonizing experiences of her life. In quote, Brittany said this, if it would have been solely up to me, I wouldn't have gone through with it. But Justin was adamant about not wanting to become a father. And my camera's about to die, y'all, so I'm gonna have to record this separately. <laughs> but we're gonna talk about Brittany and her being fat shamed and ridiculed in 2007 while she was doing her VMA performance. Take a look at this. Today, everyone is talking about Britney Spears' lackluster performance in front of millions. Our Kojo was there for the backstage report. Fresh off the stage, Britney asked for a copy of her performance. Perhaps her performance was less than polished because of all the partying she got in in Sin City rather than rehearsal time. Late Friday night, Britney hit three hotspots and was snapped at Caesars Palace at Pure Nightclub with P. Diddy. Saturday night, she hit the dance floor again. And last night, after leaving the awards, Britney was spotted at Noir Nightclub until 2.30 this morning. So while the media was saying crazy things like this, here is what really happened according to Britney during that iconic VMA 2007 performance. Right before Halloween in 2007, I was supposed to perform Give Me More at the VMAs to help promote it. I didn't want to, but my team was pressuring me to get out there and show the world I was fine. The only problem with this plan I was not fine. Backstage at the VMAs that night, nothing was going right. There was a problem with my costume and with my hair extensions. I hadn't slept the night before. I was dizzy. It was less than a year since I'd had my second baby in two years. But everyone was acting like my not having six pack abs was offensive. I couldn't believe I was going to have to go out on stage feeling the way I felt. I ran into Justin backstage. It had been a while since I'd seen him. Everything was going great in his world. He was at the top of his game in every way and he had a lot of swagger. I was having a panic attack. I hadn't rehearsed enough. I hated the way I looked. I knew it was going to be bad. I went out there and did the best I could at that moment in time, which yes, granted, was far from my best. At other times, I could see myself on video throughout the auditorium while I performed. It was like looking at myself in a funhouse mirror. I'm not going to defend that performance or say it was good, but I will say that as performers, we all have bad nights. They don't usually have consequences so extreme. You also don't usually have one of the worst days of your life in the exact place and time that your ex has one of his best. Justin glided down the runway into his performance. He was flirting with girls in the audience, including one who turned around and arched her back, shaking her breast as he sang to her. Then he was sharing the stage with Nelly Furtado in Timberland. So fun, so free, so light. Later that night, the comedian Sarah Silverman came out on stage to roast me. She said that at the age of 25, I'd done everything worthwhile in my life I'd ever do. She called my two babies the most adorable mistakes you'll ever see. I didn't hear that until later though. At the time, I was backstage sobbing hysterically. Here was the clip that Britney was speaking on when a comedian called her children mistakes. That incredible Britney Spears, everyone. Wow. She is amazing. I mean, she is 25 years old and she's already accomplished everything she's going to accomplish in her life. It's, it's mind blowing. And she's so grown up. She's a mother. You know, it's crazy. It's weird to think that just a few years ago on this very show, she was this like sweet, innocent little girl in slutty clothes riding around with a python. Nah, that's not nice, calling Madonna a python. But have you seen Britney's kids? Oh my God, they are the most adorable mistakes you will ever see. They are so cute. They're, they're as cute as the hairless vagina they came out of. I'm, what, I'm serious, they're this cute, you guys. Britney's mental health was negatively impacted by the relentless demonization and frequent stalking by paparazzi, which resulted in her shaving her head, which we all saw. And even when she shaved her head and it was clear as day she was dealing with mental health issues, the media still ridiculed this young lady. Kelly, Britney Spears has shaved her head. Okay, it, are y'all kidding? Cause somebody just told me that out there and I think that's a joke. Is that a style that you would ever consider for she yourself? She did not shave she her did. head. 
Are you for real? Absolutely. <laughs> wow. To I could still be a young woman and do something completely different and have a whole new career and still have hopefully a, a, my whole life ahead of me. But you could say the same thing about someone like Britney Spears. Absolutely. There's only a three months age difference between you and Britney. Absolutely. And look at the difference. Complete disaster. Well, I mean, people handle different things differently and thank God I've been, you know, surrounded by honesty and thank God I've chosen to, to still be around people that I trust. And it's really difficult when you're a celebrity to know the difference. So all of this stuff that was happening in the media led to her to shave her head, go through a lot of mental health issues, and of course, lead into a 13 year conservatorship where she was abused allegedly. Now, although the media has catapulted Britney's career, it also was the demise of her career. It is so shameful how the media just portrayed Britney. And this is why I still am not the biggest fan of Justin Timberlake. Like, I don't know, Justin just gives me snake vibes. And yes, he has apologized, but it took him over a decade to just apologize to Britney and Janet. He just seems like the person that uses people for what he can get out of them and then just boosts himself up while they are left in the back burner. And that definitely is not a good person in my eyes. Britney's entire life is just sad to see and seeing how she is now, though I am happy that she seems to be a little bit more free, you can tell all the things that she went through in her childhood and throughout her career led her to where she is now and that she would have been a lot better off had she not dealt with the intense misogynistic media back in the early 2000s. It's just utterly disgusting the amount of people that use and abuse Britney and it's clear as day. You just see all these people, Diane Sawyer, these comedians, everybody was just using Britney and hurting her so severely. And you guys, we have a lot more people to talk about. So be sure to stay in for part two. This video would have been hella long if I went on talking about other people. But if you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Comment down below your thoughts. Please be sensitive as always, and I will see you all in my very next video. I love you guys. Bye. Taking you in this moment. Come get close like you own name. Read your aura, you want more of all this love, you'll be your name. Release all of your burdens.